Welcome to an American Homestead, podcasting live from deep within the Ozark Mountains at an elevation of 2,200 feet. It's 10 Eastern, 9 Central, and it's good to be back. Have a lot of stuff to talk about tonight. Jamie is with me as always. Have my cup of coffee. Big stack of stuff. And um, some really interesting things I know where you're going to enjoy talking about. I'm seeing the chat room fill up, so thanks everyone for joining us tonight. Really appreciate you coming by. Um, let's see, i got a whole bunch of show notes here to get to. I was listening to Deep South Homestead before our show. Folks, if you're interested in these podcasts, you can always uh, go to the homesteadnetwork.com. Look for other interesting homestead podcasts that that are listed on that website. If you go to the homesteadnetwork.com slash showtimes, you'll find a whole bunch of other channels uh, that podcast or broadcast uh, most, much in the same way we do. However, most of them have uh, video attached with the audio. You don't see that here because we are off grid and when the sun goes down, you know, the lights go down. So all we have is usually candlelight or lantern kerosene power kerosene lanterns and it just doesn't make for very good video you can hardly see us so we decided to go ahead and do the old you know 1930s radio you know family sitting around the radio format that's what we're doing for our podcast so welcome aboard glad you're here if also if you like these podcasts you want to download them and listen to them later you can go to your favorite browser search for youtube mp3 downloader and download the YouTube video um, into an MP3 format. A lot of browsers nowadays allow you to do that. It's a really simple simple process. Uh, So just go to your favorite browser and search for YouTube MP3 Downloader and pick the one that you want uh, and go ahead and, and download that and listen to it, uh, you know, on the way to work. You know, you're stuck in traffic. You know, you're still living in the city. I've been there, you know, so you just want something to listen to. Interesting. Well, that's us. So, um... Deep South, before we came on, was talking about salsa and just how you can use it for everything. Yeah. That's totally true. Yeah, you can. We did that tonight. We had like a salad type tortilla type thing, and we just threw salsa on it. Yeah. Well, we've actually we've had it on salad too. You know what my favorite thing to do with salsa is lately? What's that? Is to mix it with cream cheese. If you mix it with a little cream cheese, oh, yeah, is good. it's a really good kind of... I would say like a healthy um, queso dip. Yeah. <laughs> Healthier yeah. <laughs> queso dip. And it's super easy. You just, you know, make your cream cheese um, just sit on the counter for a while so it's not super stiff. And then, you know, mix your salsa with it, however much you like. So, yeah, I was in the garden. We, we harvested, we've been harvesting lettuce on our, from our garden quite a bit and some onions and and uh, we like these tortillas. Sometimes we make them from scratch. Sometimes we buy them. Um, but, uh, you know, we just roll them up with some beans and you know, some of your canned beans and mm-hmm. some rice. And it, it's it's really good. And we just throw it all together with some of the salsa that we grow. So, I mean, salsa, you can use it for everything. So, that's why, like, I got about 60 tomato plants. I've got about 30 of them in the garden right now. There's some in the greenhouse that I'm going to be transplanting this week because they're just about big enough to plant them. And... Um, you know, it'll probably be about 60 plants, and that's going to produce a lot of tomatoes. And the best thing you can do with that, folks, is salsa. You know, mix it with some onions, mix it with some garlic, mix it with some, we do popolo and some other things, some other herbs and spices. Yeah. It's already pre-made, so it, it's an easy meal that you can... You just pull it out and use it for anything. Deep South was saying chili, and absolutely, I do that all the time. Um, especially with my canned beans and my canned meat and my salsa, I have chili ready to go. You said last week, um, no one cares about my coffee. Did you know a couple people left comments saying they care about my coffee? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got my coffee. I got my decaf going tonight, folks. You know, so we're ready to go here. Um, so what do we do this week? I just slapped at a bug. The bugs are in, man. It was first day of summer today. I mean, it yeah, wasn't first day of summer first today, day of summer, but it was yeah. like in the 90s. Yeah. It was in the upper 90s today. It's gotten hot. It got hot. And the bugs are out, boy. And oh. But we were in down in the 40s this last week. I know. We got, yeah, last week it got down in the 40s. Yeah, so now, now it's getting hot, which is great. So it's, Zach hates when it gets hot. I, can't, I, hate I it. like it. I, hate I it. like it when it gets hot. I like the wintertime. I, I like I like to freeze my tush off. I don't like, I can't stand this heat. 
I just lay there. Some, I just I want to go to the creek. That's all I want to do is just sit in the I water. Like, I like having all the windows open. I like, I just, I don't know. For some reason, like, I think I can breathe better. I mean, that sounds really crazy because it's humid. And most people say, oh, I can't breathe. It's so hot and humid. <laughs> but I don't know. I'm just weird, I guess. Um, so what do we do this week? Back to the question. Well, I don't know. What did we do this week? Well, I mean, well, give us a cat update. A cat update? Well, we, okay. yeah. <laughs> who, who out there within the sound of my voice wants a kitten? Yeah, yeah, you, we can't ship a kitten, though. We could do, like, a prize, you know, trivia question, ship a, ki- ship a kitten to Australia. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So <laughs> we have five kittens, two girls and, uh, no, 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 three girls and two boys, two boys we figured. And um, we're going to we're going to do what your sister did. There's some really nice colors in the bunch because they come from a calico mama. So we got some black and white ones. We got a kind of like a grayish calico one. And we got um, a pure orange one. And we have a white one, white one with a little bit of orange. Yeah. <laughs> so her sister, when they had cats, they basically sat in front of Walmart and gave them away until they were all gone. Yeah, they have to go. Yeah, we're, we're going to do that maybe. We'll just call it a family day. We'll go to town and um, sit in front of Walmart and the kids can, you know, pawn them off on complete strangers. Last summer, those of you who are readers and familiar with Beverly Cleary books, I like them because they're kind of old, more old fashioned. They were written when I was a kid. Anyway, um, the book Socks comes to mind because the little girl didn't want crazy, unbehaved kids to take the little kitten, and they were about to take the little kitten, and so she stuck it in the mailbox just to save it <laughs> from <laughs> being taken from wild children. <laughs> we're not going to keep the kittens. We can't keep the kittens around here. You know, farm country, ladies and gentlemen, kittens are a dime a dozen. Cats are a dime a dozen. Most farms have cats that aren't even their cats. Um, we have I spot cats all the time when I'm out on the homestead, you know, that aren't ours. Yeah. Um, and uh, so we gotta get rid of the cats. We can't can't keep the kittens around. But uh, we'll give we'll try to find some good homes for them. And um, but they have to go. A good home is a home. Yeah. There you go. The home that's got four four walls and a roof. <laughs> wow. It's a good home. What if they keep it outside? It, then it'll be an outside cat. It'll catch mice. I know. That's a good cat. Well, then it doesn't have to be four walls. It come, <laughs> our cats, folks, ladies and gentlemen, our cats come from good stock. I mean, their father is a, a tremendous hunter. And uh, the mom knows what to do. I don't, we have, She's killed a couple things. We don't know yeah. how well, but she, she does hunt. She took a mouse that we killed yesterday. Yeah, yeah so we killed a mouse in a mouse trap. She was very happy to get it. And she knew, she ran off with that thing, boy. So, um... Let's see, what else do we do this week? I cut some trees on the mill, or I cut some trees down for the mill. I cut down, I'll have a video coming out on that. What I did is I just took my camera, um, my cell phone camera, and I was out there in the field, and I just decided to turn it on and start filming. So I'll put that up this week, and you'll see um, me working with the Massey Ferguson tractor and hauling in some trees, some more cedars that we're going to be cutting up. Me and the boy are going to go tomorrow morning when we get up, and we're going to go cut some cut some cedar trees on the on the sawmill so we can get some more boards uh, for some of Tim's projects coming up and then um let's see worked on the garden this week i you know working with the tomatoes again you know get trying to get them up to some size in the greenhouse so we can put them out in the garden and um you gotta get some cages ready i mean some of these tomato plants are getting big enough now they need to be put into a cage so there's lots of stuff going on. I planted some more seeds for a few things uh, that didn't take off right away. So got those going. And one thing I have really left to plant, I've tried to plant uh, twice now, is Egyptian spinach. And uh, I planted it in containers, and it came up. When I tried to transplant it, it didn't work. I died. So um, I have to figure out, I really, really want Egyptian spinach. Because Egyptian spinach, ladies and gentlemen, you can have salads in the middle of summer when most of your other lettuces have gone bitter you know in the summer heat yeah and so we re- we like salads and we want to be able to you know eat salads especially when the to- tomatoes start coming in um having that fresh tomatoes with some greens it's just it's so good 
So I want to get Egyptian spinach. And I've heard a lot of good things about it. It's very, very heat tolerant and you can do some amazing things with it. It's very nutritious. Um, so we're trying, I, want to, I really want to grow it. So I got some more seeds and I'm going to try for a third time to get this stuff to grow. They say once you get it to grow, it'll grow back every year. I mean, it, the seeds are numerous. They'll come, they'll fall on the ground. They'll grow back every year. Um, and they grow really well. So I, you just have to get it to grow first. So I'm, I'm on my third try. I'll, I'll get it going this week. Um, killed an armadillo this week. Uh, I couldn't put that video on YouTube because you might end up in YouTube jail when you do that kind of thing. So there was something rooting around in my garden, and I found out what it was. And we did a video on using our 330 kind of bear traps to trap it. And I was for sure that it was going to be a groundhog or a, um, a gopher or something. And sure enough, I mean, because last year I killed a groundhog. I killed a groundhog last year that was getting into the garden and tearing it up. And then I come out here one morning and it's the same damage, same type stuff. And I'm like, oh, no, we've got another groundhog. So I set my traps and lo and behold, the next day, it wasn't a groundhog. It was a gigantic armadillo, biggest armadillo I have ever seen, and at least since being out here. And I killed it, and I, we did it all on video, and I put it on Patreon because you can't kill things and put it on YouTube. It's just you don't do that. I've learned my lesson. So, um, but, yeah, we killed an armadillo this week. It was tearing up the garden, just making a huge mess. But, they, you know, and he was living, I think, in the, the old groundhog's uh, tunnels. You know, because I think what Tim found out is when he researched it, that armadillos don't dig their own holes. They will use the holes of other animals that have vacated it, and that's the holes they use. I don't know if that's true, but that's what he found out on the Internet. And we know the Internet's never wrong. So, um, so uh, Tim is also built busy been this week building a kitchen shelter for our, our Sukkot field. So every year in the middle, in the fall, we have people come out and they camp on the homestead for Sukkot. It's a fall feast in the Bible. And so uh, he's been building us a kitchen because we, right before, we've kind of put up these like little tent shelter things out there. It's and, like a tarp and, first and, yeah, and then it was Folding a, tables. Yeah. And so he's like, you know, we'll build something a little more permanent. Uh, that's kind of rustic. So he went out and he got some reclaimed lumber and um, from the old chicken barns. Yeah, it's all used materials. Yeah, just old used materials. And he built kind of a rustic little kitchen that we can use yeah. out there. I told him I'm going to be spoiled, though. The rest of the campers aren't going to have a permanent shelter. Well, yeah. Well, we're still going to be sleeping in tents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. So... um we're hosting. We can have it. We can. Have I <laughs> know, and we do plenty of other stuff for people while they're here. But still, I kind of feel bad. Yeah. Um. Hey, if they want to bring their own wood, reclaim lumber, and build something while they're here, they can do that. They just have to tear it down, or maybe they can leave it up if it's good enough. <laughs> oh, um. We're not doing a trivia question tonight because uh, I need to make sure if they're uh, the winner last week of the Turners. Um, hey, listen, if you haven't gotten your knife yet, it's probably on the way. But I think the Turners won last week. And who else was it? It was Turners and Simple Life. So um, remember. there was a bug just crawling on my leg. Yeah. See, see, well, yeah, it was it was climbing up my back a minute ago. Uh, there's bugs everywhere. I, this is summer. I hate summer. Um, not that I care about bugs everywhere. I'm used to the bugs. I'm just like, man, when I'm in my house, come on. Um Let's see. What was it? Oh, the winners. Winners of the, of the giveaway, the knives giveaway. So if you want a knife, Simple simple, and um, the Turners, did you guys get your knives? Um, I'm hoping you guys got your uh, your knives. If not, uh, they're probably on their way. But I think I'm not, I'm not sure if I got uh, the knife the week before that was given to somebody named Emma. I forgot what her name was. Emma Drummond or something. Emma. Emma, if you're in the audience tonight or if you're listening to this later, send me your information again. Um, I'm not sure if I got your knife in the mail. Okay. If you got it, great. Uh, then Tim is on it. And, you know, I thought maybe I think maybe I dropped the ball on that. So, but I think I've gotten out to everyone else. So let me know in that and, and we'll figure it out. What else? Let me go back to the, the thing. Okay. So seven things homesteaders do differently. That's what we're talking about tonight. Um, you can watch the, the thing and see if anybody replies about the pocket knives. Okay. Okay. 
Let's see. Seven things homesteaders do differently. And this is from HillsboroughHomesteading.com. So, you know, if, you, if you've tuned into the show before, you know that I like to mention other homesteaders, um, other blogs that I have not yet, um, you know, focused on. Or they have some, some people who have good articles that may not be as well known or on the blogosphere, especially when it comes to homesteading. And so I try to share those articles. Well, the first one tonight is from uh, Hillsboro Homesteading. It's old-timey self-sufficiency for a modern time. And... Um, they had a pretty cool article, Seven Things Homesteaders Do Differently. I thought me and Jamie could talk about it and enjoy that. So let's see what we got here. Hold on. I need to put up the – pop out the chat. Pop out the chat so Jamie can watch it on this side of the screen. And on this side of the screen, I'll read the article. Okay. i got to put this back. One second, folks. All right. So – Seven things homesteaders do differently. Number one, homesteaders pride themselves on self-sufficiency. They say not yet. Lauren Tenner says not yet. Em- Emma got hers. Okay, got Good. Emma Drummond. Okay, I knew it was Drummond. So Emma got hers. Lauren hasn't gotten hers yet. Or, or uh, um, yeah, the Turners haven't gotten hers yet. It says, number one, a homesteaders pride themselves on self-sufficiency. A homesteaders idea of self-sufficiency isn't moving out of our parents' house at age 25. It's building our own, making our own, growing our own. It's about not relying on anyone or anything else for our electricity, our food, our clothing, and our lifestyle. It says, I made my headboard out of old barn wood. It weighs a ridiculous amount, and it's not very attractive. But you know what? I know where the materials came from. I know exactly how many hours and nails and splinters went into making it. And when it breaks, I'll know how to repair it. So it may not be beautiful to many, but it's beautiful to me. And when I read that, I thought about our kitchen table. Because, you know, our kitchen table was made from reclaimed lumber from a chicken barn on our own on our property that Tim found. And but it is beautiful. It is it is beautiful, but some people might not think so because, you know, people are picky. I don't can't really imagine anyone not thinking so. I'm just I'm sure there are people out there who I mean wouldn't. there are people who maybe don't like the um, kind of farmhouse style. But I think if you like that style you would think it was nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just wondering, you know, maybe not everyone would like a farm table like we have. It's from Reclaim Lumber. I think it looks great, but some people might turn their nose up at it. But, you know, what? it's our table, and we like it, and it'll probably be around for generations. Don't you think? Yeah, but I still have a rule that it, if it comes in the house, I really like it to be aesthetically pleasing as well as functional. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. So that was the first thing that came to mind. We do things differently. We pride ourselves on self-sufficiency. We went out, Tim went out, and he found this lumber, reclaimed lumber, and built it from, you know, for the kitchen table. So um, number two, homesteaders spend their time differently. We spend, we spend our hours in the garden nurturing a single plant. We spend hours blanching, peeling, and canning our tomatoes. We cook from scratch. We knit and crochet our own blankets. Homesteading definitely isn't easy. We have a nonstop barrage of projects plants and animals that need constant attention and a household to run but our time is always well spent we may be exhausted at the end of the day but we go to bed at night knowing we would never have it any other way i mean we can relate to a lot of that yeah Mm -hmm. i mean you know we have animals there's always things that need non-stop constant attention we you know jamie has a household to run here you know with the kids and getting them dressed and to bed on time and you know their homeschool done and all that stuff and, you know, I'm out there working on different things and, you know, making videos for you guys as well and trying to get it all done before the sun goes down, you know. And um, and sometimes, you know, you still work when the sun goes down. So I totally get it. We spend our time oh, differently. Oh, I got it. Oh, what was it? Oh, where's the light? The bug. She got the bug. <sighs> oh, it's a cricket. How did the cricket no, get No, it's not. It's, it's some not? kind of like a... Here, 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 here. It was crawling up my leg. Here. She, she, got, she got the bug, folks. It's dead now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll feed to the chickens tomorrow. It almost looks like a... It's like a cricket. No, it's not. It's like a cricket to me. No. Its legs are bent like that. We have a disagreement with what it is. Anyway, all right, back on to the homestead. Um, number three, so homesteaders appreciate what they already have. It says when you can't run to the store, either because you live in the middle of nowhere, we totally get that, or don't have the funds or simply don't want to, you have to take a closer look at what you already have. 
Everything becomes more valuable when it isn't easily replaced. Everything we own can serve multiple purposes. If something breaks, we simply see how we can repair it or reinvent it into something else. Last week, I started to teach myself how to sew, but I didn't want to go to the store to purchase fabric. So I found an old shirt that, that has never fit my husband right and crafted a satchel out of it. Now, something that was never used helped teach me a valuable skill and, I, and will have a second life as a bag. Mm-hmm. And you've done that a bunch of times with things. Oh, I remake things all the time. All the I time. mean, fabric can be expensive, so my favorite place to get it is the Goodwill. Like a lot of times, I'll look for a really... Um, you know, a really plus size full skirt. I mean, you can get a lot of fabric for $3. Yeah, exactly. Or even less if it's on sale. But um, you can find amazing things at Goodwill. I mean, really expensive stuff. I've made, I made an apron out of one of your shirts once. Yeah. An apron? Yeah. What shirt? Yeah, I don't wear it very much. It's a, it was that gray one you had that you never wore. I don't remember. All right, but I mean, you know, a lot of these things we can identify with because, you know, when things break around here, you got to fix it. You know, maybe it's not something you can easily get at the store. Um, obviously, there's some things that you can go to the store and, and replace, but not always. And so it's good to be able to try to invent your own thing. So number four, homesteaders learn what they don't know. And this is big. This is real big. Homesteaders are not content letting others fix our cars, grow our crops. We want to raise our own chickens so we can teach ourselves what we need to know. There is so much information that we're losing as the country homesteading lifestyle dies out. As people rely more and more on civilization, on supermarkets, and the electric company, we're losing touch with the natural world around us. School children don't know where our food comes from. They can identify more logos for companies than they can different types of plants. Yeah, it's so true. What was that show that came out? Oh, it was years ago. That British guy who was the chef, um, Jamie Oliver. Maybe okay. somebody remembers the name of the show. But he went around to different classrooms, it seemed like. I only watched it once or twice in the United States. And um, kids could not identify vegetables. Kids cannot identify vegetables. Yeah, like some kids didn't even know what broccoli looked like. <laughs> Deep South says, funny, Jamie, Danny had to kill a bug just as our stream ended. Yeah. Well, we, we, we killed the other one over on this side. It's this time of year. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. I think I've seen that, you know, where they held at different fruits and vegetables and yeah, the kids didn't know what they were. But that was years ago. That was back when we had television, I think. Yeah. I don't even know, but maybe somebody knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm not, I don't remember. Watch the chat room and I'll keep going. So um, homesteaders are brave. Number five, homesteaders are brave. We may not know it at all, but we, uh, sorry, we may not know it all, but we, we may not have degrees in animal husbandry. Maybe we've never raised a pig before, but we don't let that stop us. We try and we fail and we get up and try again. It takes a deep well of resilience to be a homesteader. We will spend hours building up our compost pile, planting, watering, and tending our crops only to have a late frost or a disease come through and wipe it all out. But we don't give up. We'll try again next year and the next and the next. And it's true. Guys, I think the biggest the biggest thing, you know, if, if you're ever, you know, excuse me, if you've never done homesteading and you want to try and start it, Grow as much variety as you possibly can because I've mentioned it I think every year that I've done this is that you have to plan on failures. You have to plan. I I plant 60 tomato plants not because I know I'm going to get 60 tomato plants. I know I'm going to lose maybe 10 to 25 percent of my plants to either disease, pest, or whatever, you know. And so I grow 60 tomato plants because if I only end up with 45 or 50, I'll be happy with that. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, and that'll provide everything we need. Mm -hmm. So grow lots of variety of different things. It's like imagine your garden as your stock market, your stock market holdings. You diversify. You have some squash. You have different varieties of squash. You have different uh, varieties of of, uh, cabbages or different varieties of um, tomatoes or, you know, you have carrots. You have all these different things knowing that some of them are going to fail. You have, you know, our peach tree this year, all the blossoms were frozen off. Didn't produce one peach. Mm-hmm. And so it's just that's the way it is. We're not going to get any peaches this year, but you know what? We'll probably do okay on blackberries. Yeah, we better. Yeah, well, so we'll do good on blackberries. That'll be our fruit this year, but no peaches. Maybe next year. Remember last year, our blackberries were horrible because they didn't get enough rain. They mm-hmm. were so small. Yeah, they were small. You know, but we went and had a great harvest on peaches. 
Mm-hmm. Remember, we went to the peach picking place. Mm-hmm. And I don't think the peach picking picking place is going to have a harvest this year. Oh, I hope so. But, yeah. So I don't know. We'll see. We're going to have to wait and find out. But I just have to make a comment about the chat room. And I know you don't like me to do this, but... Okay. Lauren, you... I think you and I are kindred spirits. Now, I know you know what that <laughs> means. And you... And you know the reference. Well, she's talking about how they had a spider and they named it Charlotte and they kept it so that it'll kill mosquitoes. That's just messed up. It is not messed up because, okay, so last summer we had a spider in our bathroom and Joshua had read the book and so he named the spider Charlotte. (laughs) (laughs) Good gravy. It's not, it's not. Anyway, Zach doesn't understand. I understand. <laughs> but he loved that spider. I know. He liked to watch it eat the bugs. And, and it killed a lot of flies. Okay, good. I hope it do. it's back next year, this year. Um, okay, number six. Homesteaders are clever. There's something to be said for redneck ingenuity. My husband can MacGyver a solution to almost any problem with duct tape and bailing twine. We often don't have the option to run to the, into town to buy a part or a piece of something we need to finish a project for. That's where our creativity comes in. Homesteaders thrive under challenges. We have to look at what we already have available to us and create a solution. To see this amazing creativity in action, get a tractor stuck in the mud, suddenly a homesteader becomes a master mechanic, engineer, and a physicist. What's the saying? Necessity is the mother of invention. It's totally true. We've seen so many things that get jerry-rigged around here to make it work. Um, You know, my neighbors do it. We do it. Everyone does it. It's just the way it happens. Um, you got to make it happen. So you make it happen. You figure out a way that it can work. And that's why I really, you know, I like to learn the skill of a welder because I think having a welder really totally ups the game when it comes to making things that you need, you know, to replace parts with. Stuff like that. So... Um, at some point, I'd really like to be taught how to do welding. Yeah. Homesteaders, number seven, homesteaders have different priorities. So uh, it says non-homesteaders will never understand how exciting it is to smell a handful of fresh compost or harvest that first egg from your chickens or pick fresh peas for your dinner. I love poop. I, I hoard horse poop like it's going out of style. I've seen what composted horse poop can do for plants, and it's worth its weight in gold. I feel my sexiest wearing muck boots and dirty jeans. Hard work is sexy. Many of my friends would disagree if I showed up to a nice restaurant smelling of manure. I'm just picking another bug off my neck. Mm. Um, Now it's your turn. What do you do differently as a homesteader? And so this article is posted over at hillsborough-homesteading.com. Link in, in the description below, as always. You can always follow our reading by just clicking on the links in the description below. Um, please leave a comment. Now, I, I noticed something. I believe it's this one. Let me check and make sure. Yes. Um, this is a – I mean, I think it's a pretty well-written article. I, I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. And um, – there was no comments on it. So it's not a very well-known homesteading blog. So go over there. Go to Hill, hillsboroughhomesteading.com. Link in the description below. Give them some love and uh, tell them you heard about us. heard about them on an American Homestead podcast. And uh, check out the article and leave a comment. You know, what is it that you do different, you know, as a homesteader? Yeah. Check it out. All right. Um, now, this article... I think that she would shower before she goes to a nice restaurant, though, right? Well, <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Well, we, we, I mean, how, when's the last time we went to a nice restaurant? Or like our, our anniversary, like two years ago? Yeah. Well, yeah, something like that. I mean, something like that. Uh, yeah. It doesn't happen very often, folks. Um, so the next article, let me make sure. This is something I did this week. Uh, I didn't mention it earlier on because I was going to mention it in the article. And it's how to naturally treat scours in livestock. So you Probably most people who have livestock have seen this at some point. You know, one of your animals, whether it be a cow, whether it be a sheep or a goat, gets scours, and you want to fix it. Um, Shalom Acres turned me on to this, and it's basically digging up some blackberry root and boiling it. It's an, it's an astringent, and it will clear up scours in an animal overnight almost, basically overnight. So how much do they have to drink? I don't know. I just um, They just say put it in the water. Boil some and put it in the water. Now, I, I saw multiple recipes online. They were all different. Um, so we just boiled a big pot of it, and I put it in their water. And, you know, it looks like they're clearing up. 
We'll check it again tomorrow to make sure, but they look all right to me. Huh. Okay. So it's blackberry root. It's an astringent, and there's a lot of people. I mean, I did a video on it this week, and I'll put it up. And I said in the video, I said, listen, I'm not. I'm just going to show you. This is what I'm boiling. I dug up the roots, and I showed the different kinds of roots because the roots for the uh, the wild blackberries were a lot different than the roots from what, what do you what do you call them? Not, uh, cultivated. Cultivated. That's right. But which ones did you use? I used both. So I dug up some roots from the wild blackberries, and I dug up roots from the cultivated. They were completely different roots looking, but I did both. But aren't they roots that we need? No, I just dug up a couple plants that went off wild. Oh, okay. They were growing out of out of turn. He knows that I don't like to pick the wild blackberries, and I really like to pick the cultivated yeah. ones. Just <laughs> because you don't get stuck when you pick the, yeah, the, the cultivated I, I don't ones. Like, I don't like the thorns. So... Um, I had the two types of roots. I did a video on it. It'll be up probably tomorrow sometime or the next day. And um, I just – I didn't do a detailed video. So if you want a detailed video, Shalom Acres will be putting up a detailed video on that soon. You can go check out them and because he's the guy who's been doing it. He knows. He has a book on it. Um, I have never done it before. I have no experience in this whatsoever. I just tried it, and I'm betting it's going to work because there was a lot of people online, ladies and gentlemen, that said it works, and it works very well. So um, most people have blackberries or can get to blackberries. If you can just dig them up, then you can use the roots for this because I think at some point every livestock owner deals with their animals getting scours. It's just it's just what happens. So uh, go over head, head over to Shalom Makers and, and they'll talk about that um, in a video probably coming up at some point. Um, but this this article that I want to talk about here it was from Reformation Acres um, and it was I thought it was a really funny article. So it says poor Rusty. Last week, the not-so-little feller had the runs. We aren't sure why he had diarrhea. All we knew is that the last time he, we had the calf with scours, we all ended up with E. coli poisoning. Yeah, so you're not going to be seeing me volunteering, volunteering to deal with that again. The pasture was put on lockdown. No kids in, no kids out. Those of the children who were stuck in the pasture when the illness was discovered simply had to camp out in the barn for a few days amidst torrential downpours and violent thunderstorms. Food was thrown out the window to them, and they had to run and grab it quickly before the chickens made it there first. Survival of the fittest. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> You'd understand if you had felt those debilitating stomach pains before, it wasn't pretty. And that was back when there was just eight of us. Now there's ten. I guess they had a lot more kids since then. Let's do a little math. Ten people, three bathrooms equals not enough bathrooms for E. coli. Okay, so while the situation was urgent, I did let the kids back in the house, but we did take some precautions. Livestock caretakers were limited, so as to a few possible, uh, and there was a strict no shoes in the house policy temporarily enforced because I've given up on the hope of ever having it a permanent policy. <laughs> well, not in this house. Jamie's like, there's absolutely no way. It doesn't ever work out in practice, though. You always wear your boots inside. Well, only sometimes when I know they're clean. That's because, not true. Because it takes so much time to. Uh, it takes so he much. He leaves <laughs> clods of dirt on the floor all the time. To his credit, though, he will sweep them up when he sees them. It takes sometimes. Sometimes it takes so much time to lace up my boots. Checking my coffee for bugs. Um, it takes so much time to lace up my co uh, lace up my coffee. It takes so <laughs> much time to lace up my boots, folks. I'm it not, does take a long time to lace up your boots. And I come you in and should out, just wear your muck boots. I'm not coming in and out of the day every day and then taking the boots off. It's not going to happen. So let me continue on. It's a sore subject between yeah. us. Can you tell? Okay. So no, <laughs> no shoes in the house policy temporarily enforced because I've given up on the hope of ever having a permanent policy. Hands were washed thoroughly upon penalty of death. After a few days of this going on, I started to be nervous for a little more than just us. Poor Rusty wasn't feeling well, and I wanted him to get better so he could get back to the business of growing himself up into a strapping, strapping and beefy steer. It says, can't do that if, you're all nutri if all your nutrition is running right out the other side. Now, can you? We started to discuss if we wanted to treat it and how. Time was obviously not proving itself an effective remedy. In the midst of the discussion, I remembered being told during the great E. coli scare of 2011 that a great uncle of mine had dairy cattle and he treated it with blackberry root. It says, who, well, who happens to have a ton of blackberry brambles in her backyard? Why, that would be yours truly, of course. 
Utilizing the grunt-working teenage muscles and herbalist nature of my oldest son, I placed Rusty's medical care in his hands. He dug up a handful of roots, covered them in water, and simmered them on the stove for about 20 minutes. Once it was cool, the roots were strained, and the tea, since he's not a bottle-fed calf, we, we added soaked... Uh, oh, they what they did is they added soaked... Uh, so they soaked some grain in it to get into a system. The verdict, 24 hours later, his, his movements were once again solid. So they basically took some, like, wheat grain or whatever, or corn or whatever, and soaked it in it, and then fed him the corn or grain or whatever to help him yeah. ingest it. Yeah, huh. That's good. Well, that's a pretty yeah. good idea. If that worked, hey. Yeah, if it works. Uh, some people are really against using grain, um, you know, for their animals. That's fine. But I'm just saying, you could probably use other things too, uh, even you know, alfalfa pellets. Yeah. Uh, blackberry roots, it says, are an herbal astringent, so the tea worked to dry him up. The same principle to naturally treat scours and livestock can be used for all animals. It says, make your tea and give it to them in doses until you see it has been effective with all diarrhea illnesses. Make certain that they have plenty of access to fresh, clean water. So, anyway, that article is available over at ReformationAcres.com. You can go check it out. I was just going to ask, but Deep South um, volunteered the information that blackberry root is great for people, too. Yeah, I would think it is. I mean, if it works for animals, it has to work for us. Yeah. So, Pepto-Bismol, right? Right. Natural yeah. Pepto-Bismol? Yeah, that probably would have worked better the last time, you know, I, I was in trouble and we yeah. missed the show. Yeah, that was horrible. So, um, so check out that over at ReformationAcres.com. Uh, and um, pretty good, seems like a pretty cool community over there. Pretty good blog. Lots, lots of interesting articles. Check them out. I'm sure you'll, you'll find things that will interest you. Again, as always, link in the description below. Um, and so let's move on to the next one real quick um, before we get to the chat room. We'll spend some extra time in the chat room tonight. Um, and this is another one. It's the ultimate farm guide, ultimate guide to fence options for the farm or of the farm. So if you have a, if you have a homestead, you have a farm and you need fencing options. And I think fencing options, fencing is one of the most important things for any farm or homestead. I, I've done videos on that. We've done articles on it before. Um, fencing is is very important and we need, we need to do some work on ours here um, but they give some different options for fencing uh, in this article it's over at the freerangelife.com the freerangelife.com link in the description below and so it gives four different options uh, for building fences um, on your homestead now um, again Shalom Akers has a pretty good article in fact I was talking to him tonight about this I think one of his most popular articles or popular videos over at Shalom Acres is their uh, fence post, um, their corner post video. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So, I mean, he's got a lot of hits on that. So, um, you can head over there and look for – in fact, I think if you just search for corner post on YouTube, you'll find it. So, But anyway, this has got some really good options in there, uh, things that we'll probably look at because at some point we're going to have to fix our fencing on the homestead. There's a couple places where it's down. A couple places where it needs to be repaired and then just replaced altogether. So this is something we're going to have to do. And they talk about T-Post. And with each mention, it gives you pros and cons and a bottom line. So, you know, the cost and, you know, how easy it is to handle, all these things. For each option, the pros, the cons, and the bottom line. So, folks, you know, you guys out there who are looking for fencing options, fencing is so important. Um... Great article. Gives you some options to look at. So check that out over at thefreerangelife.com. Link in the description below on this, on this article, on this video. So, okay. So uh, let's go ahead and over, go over to the chat room. Folks, if you have a question, please post it in all caps. And um, we can try to get to it. If for some reason we miss your question, uh, go ahead and post it again. We'll try to get to it. You know, we'll try. We always miss some every week, it seems like. But... If you uh, try to uh, keep trying to get us with the question, but post it in all caps so we can see it easy. And uh, while you're there, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button on the video. Hit the thumbs up button. We really appreciate when you guys like our videos. So do that for us. We really, really appreciate it. Otherwise, I'm not answering your questions. All right, just kidding. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Deep South says, Danny is the same. Jamie, he refuses to take his shoes off. I always take mine off. To be fair, I don't take my, uh -huh. mine off. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, I'm a hypocrite. Uh huh. But mine don't get dirty like yours oh, do. Please. They don't. Uh. 
We all step in chicken poop one way or the other. I mean, it's, it's just no, out there. No, I don't because I'm careful. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. I, I can't walk barefoot anymore. I don't know whether it's because I'm getting older, but my feet hurt so bad when I walk barefoot. Hey, yeah, that's another thing. You know, uh, Jim Crawford mentioned okra. Um, I pe- I've planted okra and none of it came up. I, it's, it's the first time that's happened this year. Uh, it hasn't even sprouted. So I'm going to have to go back out there and replant. I was looking at it. Um, I got home today and I realized I had to water a couple a couple plants that were in the greenhouse that I hadn't watered. And so, because um, the sun was out all day, so I had, to, I had to water them real quick before the show. And um, I noticed, I went by over to my okra, my okra patch and there's not one okra seed that sprouted. I had no idea what's up with that. And so I'm wondering, you know, how long, I mean, could the seeds be bad? You know, the seeds I saved last year. Um, so I'm trying to figure out what's going on with that. But I'm going to have to replant, obviously, because we want okra this year. I want to do some canned okra, um, spicy canned okra. We just have to make sure that we pick it early. Yeah. Well, you got to keep picking it. I know. But, but the Mennonites, the Mennonite pantry here. I know, but, but we haven't been on top of that in previous years. The Mennonite Pantry here has really great spicy okra. I think mm-hmm. it just tastes delicious. So I want to make my own. Um, why not go the military route and get a pair of boots with side zips? I'm not sure what he's talking about. Oh, with zippers. Zippers. You know, I was in the military, and we never wore boots with side zips. Um, that's a that's a civilian you know, thing. The military, as far as I know, has never further issued uh, boots ever accepted side zips. And so if the military is not using it, I'm not using it either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we um we met a guy last fall who came and camped who was in the military and he didn't have that. I don't remember. I don't think so. No, I noticed his boots because they were very similar to yours. Yeah. I always buy military boots usually from um, LA Police Gear. They have a clearance section at lapolicegear.com. And there's always boots in the clearance section. And there are always a variety of sizes. Um, they're always putting new boots up there. So I always get my boots very, very cheap over at LAPoliceGear.com. I'm not, you know, plugging them. They don't pay me any money. But I, they're, I've i been buying boots from them for years. So, And usually boots will only last one year out here. This year, I'm on my second year with a pair of Oakleys. Uh, Oakley boots that I bought for like 40 bucks over at LA Police Gear. Yeah. And they are doing spectacular. There's not one hole in them. Yeah, but you are doing a lot more computer work than you did those first couple years. That's true, but I'm still running around the woods. I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I, I abuse those things. I know. And bugs again all over my beard. Um, but either way, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not uh, I'm not easy on the boots, so we need to figure out some new boots. But uh, if you need new boots, go to LA Police Gear. How about another fifty blue thumbs, folks? Oh yeah, hit those thumbs ups. Hit the thumbs. Hit the thumbs. Really appreciate it. Um, let's see. Let me head over. Okay. Uh, let's see if there's any other questions over here. Or we're waiting for them to come through. Have you found any stretching exercises you do before starting work? Stretching exercises? I don't do stretching exercises. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't do stretching exercises. I just go out and work. <clears throat> I don't know, I've never been into that stuff, but, um, let's see, Homestead Remembrance Vermont County Country Store might have wrought iron primitives. Oh, that's probably for people who do in uh, blacksmithing. Um, Bullet wants to know, is it safe to allow chickens to go through humanor? Uh, probably, but by the time, I mean, we don't put out, we don't, we keep our humanor locked up. So all of our humidor is basically in bins, in pallet bins. That's where it breaks down for about a year before we use it. And then once that happens, um, it then you can put it on your trees. You can put it on your fruit trees, things like that. We use it on our blackberries. We know we don't put it in our garden, uh, but um, 
it uh, the chickens can go through it at that point because there's no poop left in it. There's no manure left in it. It's all broken down. It's basically dirt. Hubbard wants to know, what is the best way to decapitate poultry uh, with a killing cone? Uh, it's just Google poultry killing cone or chicken killing cone, and you'll find it. Highly recommend it. People sometimes make their own. If you just get the professional ones, it's it's money well spent. They'll, they're usually stainless steel, and they will last a lifetime. So um, highly recommend the killing cone. That's how, that's how Tim kills all of his chickens. Hmm. So, Zach, you ever tried to roast your own coffee? Yes, we did that one time, remember? Mm -hmm. We were back when we were living in the city. Yeah, I remember it really kind of being messy, so I would do it outside if we were to do it again. When you roast your own coffee, it kind of pops like popcorn, and there's a hull. Mm -hmm. They like popcorn leaves a hull, and those hulls kind of go everywhere, and they're really light, and so just the slightest breeze can blow them a long distance, and so you'll end up with them all over your house. Um, so it's best to do it outside, and plus we did it in the house when we did it, and our house smelled like coffee, which was great, by the way. It smelled yeah. like coffee like for like two weeks. Yeah, I love smell of coffee, so but I it, didn't mind that. I it, just didn't like the mess of it. If you don't like the smell of coffee, I just understand when you do that, your house is going to smell like coffee for like two weeks. Um, says, how large are your pastures for your animals? Um, we have a lot of potential pastures for our animals. Right now we have them on quarter-acre paddocks. Um, that we rotate them on or we just let them kind of run on them. Um, We're going to start rotating them here pretty soon. And uh, we'll start bringing the cow out into other places and then just tie her up and she'll just uh, eat and, you know, we'll move the tire. We'll hook her up to a tire and she just either moves the tire herself or we'll move it. Um, But she's real easy to to get into a a, a harness. Um, So our pastures are going to vary. We're getting ready to expand our pastures here pretty soon into some other places on the homestead. But we got we got to get a dozer here for, first, and we're working on that actually Monday. So, mm-hmm. um, uh, let's see. Jamie, have you used any Yulu knife and tell Zach to get a pair of military boots with side zips? <laughs> <laughs> What's a Yulu knife? It seems to me that that was that brand of knife that Alton Brown recommended. Okay, I, I don't remember. It seems to me that that's what it was. Those look awesome. Yeah. Expensive, but wow. What kind of fencing do you use? Uh, usually, uh, right now, we're using a lot of, we're using barbed wire on top of um, uh, some high tensile. It's a mix of high tensile and some other uh, 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 bugs everywhere. Um, it's because this computer is the only light in the, in yeah, the house. Yeah, they're attracted. We should put up like some. Um, I have the solar light. That over is here. not even working. We need like it's a. It's just not charged we, enough. We need the lantern, like the regular kerosene. It's too hot in here. Um. So what was I talking about? Fencing. Fencing. Okay, what, what kind of fencing? So it's it's a mix between barbed wire, some high tensile, and then some other uh, uh, um, welded fencing. I mean, they're they're listed in there. I think. Let me go back and look at it real quick. Um. It's a mixture of we, we kind of mix and match. So um, welded wire and high tensile and um, barbed wire, basically. So uh, just a mixture of all that. Uh, are you preparing for the shemitah? So um, that's kind of like a Bible question. I don't really get into that a whole lot here, but um, there's a whole bunch of disagreement on when the shemitah is. I don't get into that fight because I don't really care. I don't think anyone can know. So what we do is when the seventh year comes around, we'll let the land, the land rest. That's It's that simple. So when our seventh year, right now we're on our fourth year here on the homestead. It'll be our fourth year this year. Um, fifth year living off grid, but our fourth year here. And so we will let the ran, land rest on the seventh year. That simple. And really it's a good, it's a good agricultural uh, practice to do anyway. You know, farmers for generations have done that. Let the year rest. I'm sorry, let the year rest. Let the land rest because it gives your land time to recuperate, you know. And so it's just it's just a good practice to do anyway. Um, uh, let's see. Is it safe to let chickens go through a human order? Didn't you already say that? Didn't we already go through that? Yeah, I'm not sure. I've seen some of the same questions coming up again. Yeah, it's safe to let your chickens go through the human order. They just – it's once the human order has broken down for a year, it's not human order anymore. It's just compost. Um. Backberry tea leaf is good for treating colds. I've never heard that. 
Blackberry tea leaf is good for treating colds. Uh, let's see. Let me go back up here and find some of these others here. Yeah, maybe some of these got repeated. Zach, what should I use for phosphorus deficiency tomatoes? Um, rock phosphorus. I mean, you can buy powdered rock phosphorus in powdered form. Uh, I did this last year, and I put it all over my garden, just a big old bag of it, you know, put it out really thin, really thin, and spread it everywhere. And that's just putting phosphorus, rock, natural rock phosphorus, into my ground. And it will begin to break down over time, over years, generations, and it'll just have that it, it won't be deficient anymore because you're putting the actual rock into the ground. It's just powdered, ground-up phosphorus. So you can buy that. A lot of organic gardening stores, pretty easy to find. You can have it shipped to you. I think um, the place I got my rock phosphorus was uh, kelp4u.com. Let me see. Hold on. Oh, kelpforless.com. Kelp. Kelp for less, K E L P for the number four, L less, L E S S, kelp for less.com. That's where I got my rock phosphorus. It was a big old bag of it, and they shipped it to me, and that's what I put on my garden. Because, and, I, and folks, the best thing to do before you do any of that is have your ground tested, have your soil tested, so that you can find out what you might be deficient in. Most of your county extension office will do this, will do this for free. Find a county extension office, and they will more than likely do all of this for free. So let's see. <clears throat> what else we got here? My husband is in the Air Force, and they have side zips. Well, I think there was actually an article in the, in the newspaper not too long ago that the Air Force isn't really part of the armed forces anymore. <laughs> no, I'm serious. There was, an, there was an article that was on Drudge that, I mean, that I'm, they're, of course they're part of the armed forces. But, you know, the Air Force has turned into a business. I was in the infantry. We don't do side zips. You put your boots on for the day, you take them off at the end of the day. Every, or sometimes not at all. Everyone thinks that their branch of military is the best, right? Yeah. I mean, isn't that what it is? Like, Army fights against the Marines and... Army, it's the, the, the biggest football the... game of the year is the Army-Navy game. I don't even think they let the Air Force play football. <laughs> My dad was in the Air Force. I bet they didn't play football. He would never have wanted to play football. <laughs> Let's see. What's the best way to do, do we, oh, decapitate poultry? I think I've already answered that question like three times. Um, maybe she's not hearing my answer. Uh, is it safe to let chickens? We did that one too. Are you going to do a bricks comparison video? Yes, I have a bricks tester. We'll do some more videos on that when we do some harvesting of some peppers. That's a great way to do it. Do achicha have to be grown on a trellis? Yes. Um, you really need to give your achicha something to climb on. They, 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 if you put them on the ground, guys, they're just not going to do well. They're going to have all types of funguses and problems. Um, you know, just give them something to climb. You know, you can find a cheap trellis. You can go get a cattle panel at your local farm and garden store and cut it up and let them climb on that. You know, and th that'll be fine. You know, but something, you know, a cattle panel costs you 20 bucks. But find something um, and uh, for it to climb because otherwise it won't. It just won't do well. Let's see. Uh, salutations to all of our military here. Um, first time with tomatoes in containers doing really good. What's next? First time with try to grow onions. In, Enderwink wants to know first time with tomatoes in containers doing really good. What's next? So maybe I'm assuming he or cucumbers. she. Cucumbers. Okay, cucumbers. Cucumbers and onions. See, if you can master the onion, you will have my yeah, respect. But I I hear her saying, well. Is I don't know if it's a him? man or a woman, but I hear the person saying that I just think that you should grow something that you're going to be successful at. And then after you're successful, then try something harder. But, but people get discouraged. Right. If you can do good on tomatoes, you're awesome. You probably have a knack for it anyway. You know, try something a little, try something else, you know, go for onions, go for cucumbers, um, Okra is good. I mean, if you're doing just containers, probably wouldn't be able to do okra, but you could probably do um, cucumbers. Put a small trellis in front of a in front of a container in a container, 
and let it climb up. You could probably do some cucumbers that way. Yeah. So uh, just maybe try to find a variety of cucumbers that does well um, inside of containers. Hannah wants to know, any tips on how to start homesteading and more specifically off-grid homesteading? Yes, we have a series of videos and we're going to be adding to those this summer. It's called Homesteading 101. So you can go to our YouTube channel right now um, and search for our CR playlist, Homesteading 101. You'll find, I think, three videos in there. And man, the bugs are everywhere. You'll find three videos in there, and they are basic videos to do to watch when getting started on homesteading. Homesteading 101. Find the playlist on our YouTube channel. That'll be um, where I would the start. The key, though, I feel like, is making sure that this is what you want. You, you mentioned that in the video. Did I? Mm-hmm. Also, and I don't remember what I mentioned in the video, but finding what you're passionate about, whether it's animals or you know gardening or whatever it is, find something that's going to keep you going. Hubbard Homesteadish wants to know any recommendation on cold hardy dairy cow on one acre for Wisconsin. Yes, a really good cold hardy dairy cow for a family on one acre. Uh, would be the Scottish Highlander. It's a small cow. It's very family friendly, good with children, really good with, you know, you know, working with uh, for milking. And they're also good for meat. So if your if your cow one year has a, a, a male, if, if it's a boy, um, you can, you know, bull, you can you can butcher that. They make really good meat cows as well as good milk cows. And they are very cold hardy. So I would check out the Scottish Highlander, um, I really, if I didn't have the jersey, the mini jersey that I have now, I would be looking at the Scottish Highlander. Uh, it says, any homesteaders you know that might want water, want, want, that might want, are interested in working visitors? Uh, we get people, mm-hmm. ladies and gentlemen, we get requests all the time for people to come visit. In fact, I just got one tonight. It's all the time. I just don't have the time, and and we are, we're working on projects here, and I know people want to come, and they say they'll help, um, but we just it's just hard to do that. I know that Deep South wanted. Yeah, maybe talk about Deep South. People. We're not really that much. Um, we're not people. We already people. said we're not <laughs> set up for that, but really the reality is. A lot of our life, a lot of my life is centered around the kids and homeschooling. And I just, I don't need help with that. <laughs> I mean, to be completely honest, I, I think that for me, having to entertain someone is hard. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of hard. I think there's a really big lag um, in our broadcast tonight because we're that's why the comments are so far behind what we're yeah, talking about. Yeah, they are about. really, really far behind.